Adidas at the Zero Takumi Sen 9. 33 millimeters of full length slide strike pro midsole. One of the lightest running shoes in the market. In fact, only two other cushioned shoes that I know have the same weight as these shoes. And that's the Nike Vaporfly 3 and the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 1. All of them weigh 212 grams in men's US size 11. Super light on the feet and super bouncy. Now, if I want to chase a PB, anything between 5 to 10 kilometers, this is the go-to shoe. And then there's this, the Adidas Adios Pro 3. Also very light, 236 grams in men's US size 11. Just about 24 grams heavier than the Sen 9. With 39 millimeters of full length light strike pro midsole. This takes the cushion into max level and also they bounce up a notch. With improved comfort, if I now want to take the run up to full marathon level, this is the go-to shoes from Adidas. And then comes these shoes. With a midsole consisting of a huge 50 millimeters of Life Strike Pro and two embedded plates, this comes with a significantly extra weight. These are 330 grams in men's US size 11, almost 100 grams heavier than the Adios Pro 3. So I now ask myself, where does this come in? I bought these shoes out of curiosity. I've taken a lot of runs in these shoes in order to determine where will this fit in in running shoe rotation. But then, first things first, let's look at the full details of the shoes. So guys, welcome back to the Running Dog channel. Adidas has really hyped these shoes so much. The comfort that has been described on these shoes have really made me want to try these shoes out. And guys, this is the Adidas Adizero Prime X Strong 2. Now, the first thing that strikes you is how big these shoes are. If you look at look at the size of this box, these are the widest shoe box that I, I have received so far. The first thing I notice about these shoes is the way they look. This strong upper is really something. A beautiful work of art. Fantastic craftsmanship. These shoes are super chunky. Awesome. Let's start with the outsole. The outsole is very similar to the outsole in the Adios Pro, the Sen 9. The same smooth rubber is what they also have here. This is the Adios Pro 3 and you can see the outsole rubber in these two. Very, very similar rubber outsole design. I think this is designed for pure comfort in the long distance running. You know, they were not constrained with weights. They were not constrained by international running shoes regulations. They just want to build something that is super comfortable for runners. The outsole is thicker than the outsole in the Adios Pro 3. So, and of course, since they are not so much constrained about weight, they don't mind adding a little more to here to add more durability to these shoes. And then if we go to the midsole of a huge stack height of 50 millimeters in the heel, 43 in the forefoot, compare the stack of this with that of the Adios Pro 3, you see the difference. You can get a little give in the forefoot in the Adios Pro 3, but in the Prime X, no give at all. This is pretty stiff. This is a Light Strike Pro only midsole, and some of the plates can be seen from the outside here. The Light Strike Pro in this is super soft. Same consistency in the Adios Pro 3. Same bounce. If we now move to the upper of these shoes, that is where the craftsmanship is. Look at the way this upper is woven. It's, it's, it's amazing, guys. Anyway, it looks lovely. This is a one-piece material, but it feels nice and soft. Not much of a padding, just like in the Adios Pro 3 also. Practically nothing in the heel counter. Just minimal padding on both sides of the collar. The tongue is just woven on a thin, stretchy material. The usual heel tab they put in their elite shoes is what they also have here. Kind of TPE here to secure this firmly in the upper part of the lace cage here. If you look into this, of course, I can see myriads of holes in this. So these are going to be nicely breathable. But I put this on the scale and they weigh 330 grams. That is a significant weight. So let's talk about the feet. Now first, this has a booty construction. The tongue sewed onto the rest of the upper here, leaving a hole 
in which you can put your leg. It is not like in some other shoes when the hole is too small. I don't find it difficult at all to stick my feet inside that. And then this pull tab at the back here also helps. As you can see, I just slid my foot into that here now. That's, these shoes are quite roomy, the forefoot. It kind of feels like it's a lot of space actually because this is one of my thicker stockings and yet I still have all this space here. You know, I feel that going half a size down would have given me an even better fit. The upper feels very soft and nice and accommodating. The problem that I have with this upper is this tongue. The tongue is so thin and so soft. And then when you need to tie the laces strongly to secure it, this bites deep into the front of the ankle and it can begin to hurt. Then if I slack it, I don't get that secure lockdown which I need to be at my best. Making this tongue thicker would have been more beneficial. So apart from that, the lockdown is pretty decent. It has a minimal hint of a heel slip, but it cannot distract from the run. One thing I noticed that most of the shoes that don't have a kind of padding in the upper part here to keep the heel in place, most of them, you are going to get some kind of heel slide in this. Assuming that the tongue here is better and I'm able to tie this more securely, it may actually solve the problem of this heel slip. And standing on this, they feel awesome, you know, super bouncy, very soft and comfortable. The arch support is good. Lockdown is pretty okay. It compresses nicely and bounces up very nicely also. And despite the height of these shoes, I didn't have any issues at all in stability. So the run test, how did this perform on the run? Of course, this is not my first run in this. I've already had quite a few runs in this. But this is just to remind myself exactly how these shoes felt when I was running in this. They are super, super bouncy, nice and stable, good arch support, very comfortable. Of course, you don't expect any ground feel in shoes as massive as this. Like I mentioned, a kind of a heel slip, but not enough to distract from the run. The impressive thing about this is their stability despite the high stack so this is a very nice one if you want to go on a fast pace in this then you have to be a really strong runner because definitely you will feel the weight but as for the bounce they are amazing awesome super super comfortable a fun shoe to run in. of course there's no way realistically how we pursuing a PB in this. If you're a very, very strong runner, of course you can go the full marathon in this, in comfort. But the weight is the big drawback. Overall, I would say nice shoes to run in. I think what Adidas is probably trying to do here is to offer some kind of super comfortable run. The weight is a drawback for these shoes. You need to be a really strong runner to be able to go at fast paces over a significant distance in these shoes. One thing where it excels is in comfort. You can bounce up anything, you will not feel nothing at all. I enjoy these shoes more when I'm doing like a stride run. You know, when I'm taking fewer steps with longer strides, you know, this just helps you to bounce along very nicely. The outsole gave a nice grip on pavement. Of course, we know that this Continental outsole in the Adios brand in the Sen 9 are very, very reliable and very durable. For me, doing a marathon in this is going to be a big ask because the weight will definitely weigh me down. I don't see the sense in that. When I can still get max cushioning from the Adios Pro 3, I still get the bounce I desire at a much less work rate because of the less weight of that shoes. So in summary, I think what Adidas was trying to do here is to take the comfort of long distance running to the next level. But this Prime X Strong 2 added 50 grams of weight on the Prime X Strong 1. And that is quite significant, you know. Of every beautiful thing that this shoe has, the only drawback I have with these shoes is the weight. And their weight is not so evenly distributed. The weight is mostly at the sole of the foot. So with all the weight on the bottom of your feet, it makes it tiring. But do I regret buying this shoe? I would definitely say no. You know, this is one shoe that I still enjoy running in, but at least up to a half marathon. Very strong runners are going to enjoy this shoe because when you turn it up, 
anything less than five minutes per kilometers that's when you really appreciate and enjoy the bounce of this now, another thing which i must mention is if you look at these shoes they look so nice also another shoe that i enjoy wearing casually and me i'm 5 10 and half i don't know what happened i used to be 5 11. if I stand on this you know i can pretend to be like six feet and that's uh, something you know it gives a nice feeling too and then you will always be complimented anytime you step out in this but for running purposes if you are looking for the best marathon shoe definitely i will not suggest this because their weight will be a big burden on you in the long distance you know they are so much lighter shoes. They, the Adios Pro 3 does this one. If Adidas could have taken this upper and put it on the Adios Pro 3, I think that would have made a winner of a marathon running shoe. So that's it, guys, about this Prime X Strong. Thanks for watching this and see you in the next one.